Now let's cover the highly effective and very important skill called conscious adult choking. Now in this scenario, we have someone who was eating at a table, they began to choke, we know they were choking because they could not cough, they could not breathe, they could not speak. This is a full obstruction and it needs help if it's gonna come out in most cases. If it's easy to activate the emergency response team or call 911, great. But if not, we can wait until the patient goes unresponsive before we actually take the time to call 911 or activate a code. But in this case, we're gonna come up to the person, we're gonna look them in the eyes, are you choking? They nod yes. I know how to help you, may I help you? They give me permission to help them, they're still conscious, and so we wanna get that permission from the patient if at all possible. Now I'm gonna elevate their elbows, I'm gonna find the belly button. The belly button is my landmark so that I can tuck my thumb in and put the fist just above the belly button on their abdomen. I wanna stay below the xiphoid process, which is approximately right here. I wanna stay just above the belly button because this is where I find the diaphragmatic region. This is exactly what I want so that I can bring that diaphragm up and in while I compress the lower lobes of the lung, shoot the air up the trachea, popping that object out and it's effective the majority of the time. So I'm gonna take that hand, keep my elbows out so I'm not on their ribs any more than I have to be, and I'm gonna start with my inward and upward thrusts. And I'm gonna do these thrusts until either the object comes out or the person goes unresponsive. In this case, the object did come out. He began breathing, coughing, clearing his own airway. I simply re-encourage him that he's doing fine if he feels like sitting down, we could have him sit down. And if we had not already called 911, now would be the time to call 911 or call a code if they go unresponsive. If we've already called 911, keep them coming. It's fine. Even though the object came out, it's always a good idea to have EMS stay on the way so that if this person opts not to go in, they can be checked out by the EMS professionals. They're gonna check airway, they're gonna check some lung sounds to make sure there's no partial obstruction, and they're probably gonna do a quick assessment to make sure there's no internal bleeding from the abdominal thrust. So if the individual does not opt to have that done to them, or the EMS providers do not come, I always like to encourage them to go to their own practitioner and just be looked over and made sure that everything is okay. Keep in mind that if this person were not to have the successful removal of the obstruction, they would probably go unresponsive in a short amount of time. And it's then that we would assist them to the ground carefully and begin the skill of unconscious adult choking. Now we're gonna talk about the special considerations as it relates to a pregnant woman. You know, when we're doing this life-saving skill of trying to remove the obstruction from the airway and the person is pregnant, we need to understand that we're dealing with two patients, save mom, save baby. So it's important that we're aggressive in our treatment, but there's a special way to do it so that we don't injure the baby in the process. Let's take a look at how we do that right now. When we have the, the person in front of us, we know the baby is here in the normal location where we would do abdominal thrusts. So we're gonna avoid the area altogether by forming the fist and going under the breast with that fist on the sternum. We're then gonna take the opposite hand, go under the breast and onto that fist that's on the sternum. We're now gonna do inward thrust, inward deep thrust, and we're gonna to continue to do those compressions until the object comes out and the person begins to breathe normally again. If they doesn't come out, they're gonna go unconscious. When they go unconscious, we're gonna activate 911, and then we're gonna start doing our unconscious choking victim compressions as we learned in the other segment.